Every year, more than 25,000 people are killed or seriously injured on Britain's roads. It's just heartbreaking, isn't it? In order to reduce road casualties... See your tyres here. Hello, how are you? The traffic cops in Bedfordshire are cracking down and giving tickets out for any traffic offence. You're wasting everybody's time and your own. No matter how minor they may see. If there's a collision, the dark windows could be a result of the fact you can't see who's coming either side. A lot of people that we stop, they're only dealing with the police when we've stopped them for the seatbelt, for the mobile phone. To them, that's quite minor, but they don't see the catastrophic incidents that we go to and what we have to deal with. All the way up here, she was on the phone. In an effort to catch more motorists violating road traffic laws and make roads safer, the police in Bedfordshire have introduced an incentive scheme where officers receive credits for the tickets they hand out. And how much is this? It's £60. £60? And how much is that? £60. £120? Yep. It effectively works on when you give out a ticket, for example, a fixed penalty endorsable ticket which carries three points and £60 fine. That will give you five credits. It's your vehicle. If you arrest a disgruntled driver or an, uh, somebody that's drunk driving, that's 20 credits because it's an arrest. But you'll generally find that we don't go out there and think, right, today we're going to go and give out 10 speeding tickets just to get those amount of credits. They na naturally fall into place within your working day anyway. The idea is to get people to understand the message that breaking the law can cost lives. But it's not only about road safety. With a monthly target of 300 credits to hit, the clampdown is also about keeping officers on their toes. To some extent, our discretion has been taken away. We can't just let people off with a verbal warning anymore. This morning, PC Andy Scales is on patrol with PC Chris Norton in Dunstable Town Centre. Being able to spot possible offences in a flash is what being a good traffic cop is all about. A motorist waiting at the lights ahead has caught Chris's attention. Oh, that BMW, he's on the front. The M3 at the front, he's got black number plate as well. Hey, on your hands. The black number plate Chris has spotted isn't regulation, and it's one of their specific targets, worth a few credits. Oh, But it looks like Chris was wrong about the mobile phone. He's still on it. Oh, no, yeah. it's not. It's rubbing his ear. And that's not an offence. Under pressure to issue tickets for every offence, Chris and Andy are going to have a word with the driver about his illegal plate. You can see the number plate quite clearly, and that's when I was running it through on the Blackberry. A quick check on Chris's handheld through to the police computer shows the man shares his name with a mythological hero. Hercules. Kick him in the heel. <laughs> Not Achilles. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get your gods right. Yeah, OK. Achilles wasn't a god, though. He was. No, he wasn't. He was the son of Zeus. He wasn't a god. He was mortal. We're not laughing and joking at other people's expense. This guy had a, a reasonably unusual surname, and it just led us naturally on to discussing uh, Greek mythology. He can lift up the world, though, can't he? That was Atlas. Good man, he's a thinker. Jolly good. Hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping. Do you mind uh, just joining me at the side of the road so I'm not leaning into your car talking to you like this? Is it your car, sir? You know that, don't you, already? I've never met you before, so how would I, I guess it? check on me already. Didn't check on your car, not you. 20,000 fixed penalty notice tickets are given out for traffic offences in Bedfordshire each year. More than a few recipients don't like the way they think they're being targeted. He had something to get off his chest, and I was the person he was going to sound off at. Why did you stop me? I'll show you. Here. You've got a black number plate on your car, front and back. Didn't I see you pass me down the opposite way? Yeah. 
So how could you see I've got a black number plate on my car? Because you're at the front of the queue. But there was a queue, so you couldn't have seen through the thing that I had no license. My front license and back. We saw the one on the front. The one on the front. Go and check the one on the front, because you're lying. If it's Go if I'm mistaken, the the there's no that's point being You told rude. me that you were going to be decent, you were going to be civil and honest. So be civil and honest. My so mistake. <laughs> so you can't even tell me the truth about why you stopped me. Because I saw where you guys came from. Okay. There's no way you saw the back of my place. So I asked you again, why did you stop me? Why did you spin your car around and come and follow me? Why? Because I saw you had a black number plate. You could not have seen I had a black number plate. I saw plate a black number you. plate on your car. Oh, you're so telling lies. I'm not telling lies. You absolutely are telling lies. I'm not telling lies. Just as I say, you know what? I've got bigger fish to fry, so do what you got to do. Send me on my way. Thank you very much. Have you got the original plate for the, the back of the plate car? The original plate is in the boot. With all the things that are going on in the world, man, you can't find yourself something to do. Really and truly. You see me sitting at the thing and you think you've seen a black plate on the back of my car when you were coming from the opposite direction. There's not enough going on in the world for you not to find something for you to do. Stevie Wonder couldn't have seen a black plate on the front. Do you understand me? Why did you turn your car around and come for me? Because I saw a black question. number plate on the vehicle. I thought there was you one on the front, but there's one on the back. On the if you're not listening to me, don't right ask way. questions then. Your job is to go and do something constructive. My job is to enforce the law, road traffic yeah, law. And when you think about the things in the world that are going on that you could be enforcing, you're wasting everybody's time and your own. Right now as you speak, some shit is going down of some consequence. You could not see the back of my car. And you know it. How do you know what my eyes and can you... see? How do you know what my eyes can see? Because your eyes aren't any different than anybody else's. And as far as I'm concerned, human beings can't see round corners. No, but I can turn my head. He got it wrong in that he thought we were coming towards him. We were at a 90 degree angle. And I thought I saw a black number plate on the front. And as I turned round, I also saw the black number plate on the back. He's got black number plate as well. You would be more honest if you said to me, I saw you in that car and I fancied, what is that geezer doing in that car? Does it belong to him, maybe? Let me go and check him out. You'd be more honest if you said that. The rules from the DVLA are that you've got to have a white number plate to the front, yellow number plate to the back. Because you're wearing that sign and that, th that makes you think you can do whatever you want. That's what it is, isn't it? No. I think... Typically, loads of people that wear that sign are small men. Oh, I was expecting him to say that I've been bullied at school. Because <laughs> that's the common one. OK, yeah, well, you I'm only five foot eight. Of, you suffer with loads of issues, and that's why you put that thing on. That's exactly why. That's your opinion. Thanks that's for it. I'm not so, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't got a problem with you as a police. I think you, you do a good service Thank most you. of the time. But Just not when I'm stopping you. No, when you've stopped me for nothing. You stopped me because you saw me in the car. Did my face not fit? Is that what you're saying? Can you not be that honest? Because this I wouldn't, wouldn't even. Cons this wouldn't be the first time I'll this happened to me. Right, do you understand me? I, I, think, I'm I think you've got issues about that because it's not anything to do issues. with that with me. What? It's the next thing you can tell me. I've got a chip on my shoulder. No. I was born and raised Listen here. Here. Listen to what he's got shoulder. to say. Anyway, sir, there's Thank you. There's a sixty-pound fine for your plan display you. correct index plate. Is there anything you wish to say finally? You don't no. have to, but it may harm your defence. I'm proud to mention now. Something you to rely on the court. And if you say maybe give them a little bit of 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 it's been perceived as a notorious trouble spot ever since riots took place here in the mid-1990s. Despite efforts to improve social conditions, the police often find themselves drawn here. Marsh Farm has historically had its problems, so it is, it's a known area by a lot of the officers in Luton. That's not to say everyone in Marsh Farm causes us problems. We will go round there because we do pick up a fair amount of vehicles without tax insurance and drivers without driving licences. Sam and Shona have to get their monthly quota of credits as well. That's worth a stop. Yeah. Not that they ever find it difficult to reach their target. The car and its occupants they've spotted this time are under suspicion because of the way they look. I don't know what way it would have gone for, but... Right. There it is. Right. Right one. Yeah. They had two males in the front of the vehicle and something just didn't look right about either of them. 
and it seems the cops were right to be suspicious. They're making a run for it. It's the light blue Mondeo that's right out. It's gone for the overtake. The driver of the vehicle clearly clocked that we wanted to speak to him, so he turned into uh, the car park area. Now have a decamp, Sam. And decided to go for a run in the sun. Come on, I think we got... I'm getting out here. The passenger is nowhere to be seen, but if they're quick enough, there's still a chance of catching the driver. All I can see was just the back of him when we were running. This is a handicap race, and the odds aren't in Shona's favour. With, with my body armour on, it's like an extra stone in weight. And when you're running, your body armour bounces up and down, and you can't get a really good run on because you, you're constantly fighting the weight of the body armour. Male, light blue jeans. Yellow T-shirt. Do the units on the park road. I'm going back to the car. Sam's race is run. Any evidence of any offences that had been committed was going to be in that car, which was insecure and unattended. <laughs> We're going to the car. The driver knew the area. The pathway goes literally straight back into Marsh Farm. He's running back in to Marsh Farm somewhere. He's going to be in the trees. Another dog, please. Luckily for Sam and Shona, help is close at hand. The main description that's come out is um, light yellow T-shirt, blue jeans, trainers with dark hair. This is quite handy. We've got so many traffic here. Just unfortunately, he's made off and left us. A search of the car shows the occupants were in such a hurry, they've left behind the keys. Sam's found a mobile phone too. When I'd found the phone, I'll obviously have a look to see if it's been used or has been used recently. 815, just had one hit on the uh, mobile phone. That's on the 22nd of April this year. And that's the talk of the vehicle. Someone using this mobile phone has previously used it to call the police to report that the same car had been stolen. And now it's ringing. Hello? Hello? Who are you after? Are you after Abe? Oh, Abe's not here at the moment, is that? Yeah, thank you. Who's that? Who's ringing Abe's number? Because I've picked up his phone. Steve. All right, and Steve, where's Abe likely to be going? Is he coming to see you? I thought it was perhaps a person that had run off from the car and he'd realised perhaps he'd left his phone in the car to see who would pick up the phone, if anybody, and what was going to happen. Oh, right, and is Abe meant to be coming to you? Oh, right, OK, cool. OK, not to worry. I'll give you a call back once we find him. Cheers for your help, Steve. Bye. Shona has returned empty-handed. Abe's friend Steve's just phoned up. Oh, right. Abe? Abe? Oh, no, it's not Abe. I'm his girlfriend. I mean, who's that then? He went, Steve, I'm in Bayern. Where is he? I went, who's that? And hey, uh, Abe, oh, where, where is he? It's police, isn't it? <laughs> so it is from Bayern. Yeah, Abe. Abe, that's not who's on the... Abraham, <laughs> but that's who Pitsy said they camped it with. A camphor is a vehicle oh, seizure under Section 165 of the Road Traffic Act, meaning the driver was disqualified or uninsured. It's disqualified driver, most probably. The vehicle had been seized under Operation Camphor a couple of weeks prior, and the driver at the time happened to be um, an, a male by the name of Abe. The question now is, is the man who phoned up really Abe, and is there really someone else involved called Steve? Because at the end of the day, the person we in could be a completely innocent member of the public and a, an innocent friend of somebody who has, you know, got his car for the wrong reasons. And that's one that less uninsured vehicle on the road then, isn't it? The car is going to be recovered, but the owner will be able to get it back as long as he can prove he's got valid insurance. And we had a nice day out in the sunshine, nice little jog, some woodland walking. I've got clean trousers on as well. You've still got clean trousers on, I haven't. I haven't got Abe, I've got his phone. Steve has called again. He says the car is his, he's legal to drive, and he wants it back. We're in that car park there. There's a unit that's going to sit here till you arrive. Wow, good running skills. Huh? Good running skills. Show me the girl. You're a star. Cheers, mate. Sam's arranged for them to meet Steve at the nearby Marsh Farm tower blocks.
He just had too much ground on us. Yeah. But I'm happy to run. So yeah, let's go. I yeah. didn't know if you wanted to um, get in the car and go around the other way. Next door to Marsh Farm is another development that was built on what was once farmland around Luton, the Lucy Farm Estate. Traffic cops on the estate have pulled over a driver who wasn't wearing his seatbelt and are going to ticket him. Have you got a driving licence with you? No. Have you got any form of identification with you? No. Nothing at all? No. no. I'm just going somewhere. Is it your car? Yeah, yeah. So you've got nothing in your car that will... No, I don't right. keep nothing in the car. Giving people tickets isn't always straightforward. Many don't care for the cops clamp down. People see what you're doing is actually for the better and to try and improve people's own safety and in the end of the day it could actually increase their life expectancy should they be wearing a seatbelt. Other people just think you're doing it to generate revenue for the government or for yourselves and they just don't like the police full stop. Yeah but I just come out of that road. I know. And what, I stopped what you before you stopped at? me to okay. get my stereo. I took the seatbelt off before you saw me. You came out of that road, didn't you? Yes. I just pulled the seatbelt off so I could reach over. Right. I couldn't, so I stopped here. I was going to put the seatbelt on okay. and get my stereo out. Look so I it. wasn't driving. You never saw me driving, no. You weren't behind me or anything, were you? Okay, let me explain to you what I've seen. You're travelling in a vehicle that's come across my path and you didn't have your seatbelt on. After speeding, more tickets are given out in Bedfordshire for people not wearing their seatbelt than any other ticketable offence. The reason why we're stopping people, obviously, for to wear the seatbelts is not just to point things out to you, it's to make you aware, obviously, the hazards involved by not wearing your seatbelt. We obviously deal with RTCs, road traffic collisions, where people are seriously injured as a result of not wearing their seatbelts. People, when they get stopped and issue with a seatbelt ticket, they think, oh, why are the police stopping me? But when you've actually been to an accident yourself and you've seen someone thrown from a vehicle and then crushed by their own vehicle through not wearing their seatbelt, you can see the reasons as to why. I'm going to gonna contest it anyway. OK, that's right. Because you haven't got any form of identification with you, I need to take a fingerprint from you, OK? Which will be your right index finger. It goes with the ticket, and once the matter's dealt with, whether at court or by you paying the fine, then your fingerprint... No, I'm not giving destroyed. you a fingerprint. I'm not going to give me the fingerprint. Okay. I've given you all my details. I'm not no, going to no. give you a fingerprint. OK, let me, let me finish, OK? We can either take the fingerprint by your consent or we take a photograph. So it's up to you which one you want to provide. The police are going to get proof of who the man is, whether he likes it or not. Powers introduced in 2006 mean they can take prints or a mugshot and do it by force if necessary. Sam and Shona have got an illegal car off the road, but what they really want is someone to arrest. And they're hoping Steve is going to help them. He knows something, because he wouldn't be phoning all the time. And he's phoning from the Was that him? Line. Was he the one in the passenger seat? No. Definitely not. Hello, my man! Sam's pretty sure he's not the driver who ran off, either. There was not much time for him to recompose himself and not be out of breath and not be hot and sweaty. He was very cool, calm. He didn't give me any indication that he'd been running. I left my bloody keys in the car. I've left it parked off the road because, as you can see, it's got no tax or anything at the moment. So I've left it down here, but... How long have you owned the car? A uh, couple of months. I haven't sent the, um, I haven't sent the local coffee. I've forgotten it, so... If you were to leave your car with keys in the ignition in Marsh Farm, I can guarantee you, within several minutes, that car's going to be gone and it's going to be stolen. So that didn't ring true. So how do you know the Abe's, then? Abe? Yeah. I used, I used to work for him years ago. OK. So what are you doing ringing him, then, if you've got slightly concerned? I'll just see what he was up to. Is he? When, have you seen him this morning? No. no. Describe him to me. Yeah, it's about, like, yeah, he talks about small, short, dark hair. Yeah. That thin. See, we've just had that car make off from us. Right. And whoever was driving it run off from us. Right, OK. So we've now seized that car. The fact that he'd rung his mate ten minutes after he'd after the driver had run off and decamped from the vehicle made me think that he knew who the driver was. Where do you live, sir? Me? I live in, in Luton. Yeah, whereabouts? Well, well, I'm just in between houses. I'm waiting for a flat to be um, done up. I'm not happy with this chap. 
Can you take a seat in our car? Just so we can get some details off you. Looking back now, he possibly could have been in the car. However, at the time, I don't, be I didn't believe he was in the car. So where were you when you found us? I just found the corner at a mate's house. Yeah. Yeah. Something's not quite right, is it, Steve? No, definitely not. How about what I think's happened is you know that Abe's gone out in that car and you know that Abe hasn't got a I didn't know that he went out. Like that. No, I didn't know. I didn't know he went out in the car. But it seems bizarre that you don't know much about Abe, but you're staying at Abe's dad's house. I'm not staying there. I've just been, I've just been there. Well, can I go now, please? No, not at the minute, well, I'm arrested, no. then. No, you're being detained at the minute. Well, Till I can make some further inquiries. Well, I'll tell you what it is, and whether I don't know a lot or not, it's, I can't really help you. I'd help you if I could. That's why I've come out now. I'm, I, would have just I think you've come out now because you've got stayed? a guilty conscience and you'd rather us, you come to us or oh, we come well, to well. you. How did, how did you know that he was driving the car or anything then? Is he, did you see him run off or something? Oh, we have our ways and means. Yeah. <laughs> he was very woolly about where he was living and then said that he'd literally just come from Ames house. To try to add a bit of substance to his story <laughs> and because it's just around the corner, Steve's inviting Sam and Shona back to what he says is Abe's dad's place. We found that the you know the house was unlocked and we believe that Abe was possibly in the property. Hello, please. Is anyone in here? Nice little boy. Who's that boy belong to? No idea. So should we be arresting you for burglary then? Because you don't seem to know anything about this house. No, I know. Obviously, I know who the owner is and I know the son. I've just popped round to see How if he was How did you get there. in? So the back door. With what? Who's the that? The door was open. Well, how have you locked? Would that be there? Abe? No, that ain't him. Don't have with him. So who's that then? I don't know. I'm not sure, but you can tell you now that's not Abe. I'm telling you. But Abe. Abe's dad lives here. Yeah. So it wouldn't be unsurprising to find a picture of Abe lying around no. here somewhere. There's still no sign of Abe at all, and still nothing to arrest Steve for at all. I've got Abe's mobile. And there was nothing in the house of Abe, which we found quite astonishing. And we were thinking, why well, are you Abe and are you not? It was one of those. Still, right at the end, we just couldn't really put our finger on it. Steve, yeah. next time you speak to Abe, yeah. the worst that was going to happen if it was him that's got your car, we'd have seized it anyway for having no insurance and no driving yeah, licence. Running off, he's just made a bit of a fool of himself, hasn't he? He's yeah, made it yeah. big, 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 bigger than he needs it to. Yeah, Annoyed you and got people involved that don't need to be. Yeah, if he needs the car, if he wants to be man enough to come and stand up to it and deal with it, yeah. like I say, he can be dealt with very quickly and swiftly. We're on duty until 7. My caller number's 850, my caller number's, colleague's number's 9 to 8. If he wants to go into Luton Police Station and, you know, be man enough to deal with it, pop in there and we can deal with it really quickly. Yeah, no problem. Back on the Lucy Farm estate, the man with no ID still doesn't want his photograph or fingerprints taken. For the cops, it's a necessity, so if the matter ever goes to court, there's no doubt about who the ticket was given to. Basically, it's to reduce the number of people that aren't paying the tickets that they're issued with. Why are you lot doing this? Why are you wasting my time? We're not wasting your time. You are wasting my time. No, we're not. OK, so th they're the options. I've never done this before. In a police car, give me your fingerprint or give me your photo. OK, listen you know to me. Mean? Listen, I'm not swearing at you, so I'd like you to I'm show me... I'm not swearing at you. Yes, you are. Now, I'd like you to show me the same courtesy, OK? <laughs> oh, just, can just let me again? out, man. Just right, let I'm me out. Right, I'm ask you, can we take a photograph from you? No, you can't. Well, we have a power to do it by force, or can we take a <laughs> fingerprint from you? You ain't forcing me, I tell you. Just let me out, man. you got everything you need. James isn't letting the man out. He's getting his camera out from the back of the car. But before he does, the driver's going to have a quick fag break. Don't like that in the back of here. Let me out, then. James, you I'm not going to go now. Where am I? Please. He's lit up in the back of the car. You are? He's lit up a cigarette in the back of the car. <sighs> Just let me out, man. I'm not going nowhere, am I? Pass me the cigarette. I'm going to stand outside. No, pass me the cigarette. Listen, I'll give you ID, all right? You've got ID on, you're not taking no photos of me, all right? It's criminal, it's criminal damage to the police car, mate. Let me Which out, I'm standing arrested. here. I'm not going to leave my car now and run off, am I? Flipping heck. Just please. It's criminal damage I'm to the police car. You. No, I'm telling you to put it out. Don't take my photo. Why not? Because I'm going to say to you, I'll just give, me, I'll give you my okay. ID. Like I said to Did you. Did I say I'll just give you my ID? Where is it then? Put the cigarette out then. Let me out. Put the cigarette out. All right, I'll let it out. I'll, I'll do put it, it out, the, put it out the window then. There isn't an ashtray. That's why I'm telling you to put it out. You put it out and give it back to me. Then. Right. Did you just throw my cigarette away? It's on the floor, yeah. Why? Why are you acting like an idiot? 
Why are you huh? not giving me the ID when you got it in your pocket then? Well, I don't have to. I've never had to do it. Why it's, do I have to give it to you? It's you're an like, offence to fail. You know what? I'm going to remember everything you've done here and okay, said, fine. yeah? Okay. Everything. Can we just have your driver's license? Yeah, I'm going to give you my driver's license. Thank you. But I'm going to remember everything you two done and said here. Okay, it's fine. Here. Thank you. I knew he was anti-police from the start, but just the sheer audacity of the bloke to light a cigarette in the back of the car, I found quite astounding, really. It wasn't so difficult, was it? No, you're just making things, though. You're dying to put me, take me to the police station so you can go <laughs> and sit and have your cup of teas. You know what I mean? This is what happens every time. You know what I mean? Like, so anyone asks you for anything, yeah? You don't have to be, like, difficult. This is, this is how you lot are. You've always been like this. The next generation comes along, it's the same. You know, it's just, you, you feel, I know it's you lot, it's not us. We're in uniform, we never do anything wrong, you know what I mean? I've asked you for your driving licence, you've then said you haven't got it. Yeah, but I didn't need to because I'm going to give you all my details anyway. OK, but... So why isn't that good enough? Of, why poli- isn't that good enough? When a police officer asks for a driving licence, OK, it is an offence not to produce it. Do you understand that? No, I don't understand it. No? OK. Let me out. The man's going to have to pay a £60 fine. Not wearing a seatbelt isn't an endorsable offence for the moment. There's a cigarette there. You could keep it. You I don't smoke. It. Do you want it or not? The smoker's decided Wait. it's time to quit. Just get in the car and drive off. There's a line that every police officer has where they expect to be treated courteously in return by the person that they're dealing with. Myself or Ian hadn't sworn at him, so there's no reason for him to start swearing at us. Government statistics show that using seatbelts saves lives. Without them, it's estimated that around 300 more people would die on Britain's roads every year. Yet 5% of all drivers still don't bother. That, salmon for red light. Sam and Shona are spreading the word to those who aren't heeding the message. Like the driver coming towards them, who's easier to pick out than most. As he came past, I could clearly see he wasn't wearing his seatbelt because he's got such a white top on. But a nice white shirt, give it away. He did put his seatbelt on when he realised he was going to get stopped. Lots of people do try it, but uh, I've got a longer memory than a goldfish and I can remember that they weren't wearing their seatbelts. That's it, block the road. Great place to stop. Well done, that man. He's all yours, mate. It's Sam's turn to pick up the five credits on offer for this one. Any idea why I stopped you, fella? No, I don't know. No? No. You weren't wearing a seatbelt when you came past us on Cardiff Road? It's a vehicle all registered to you? Yeah, it's my car. Cool, cool. Any idea? Idea? I do, no. You I know haven't. what I was trying to say? No, no, I don't know. Have you got any on you? No, I haven't. What's no. your name, friend? Andrew Clark. Andrew? Andrew Clark. Andrew? Yeah. Gonna deal with this by way of a fixed penalty notice. There's no point in your licence, a £60 fine. What for? What? Seatbelt. So you don't have to say anything, but it may harm a defence. If you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah, what, what, what you're arresting me for not... No, 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 I, no, no, I, I no, 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 no. You were when you stopped it. You were when we stopped I you. I taking no ticket. Well, you can go to court with it. It's not no, a problem at all. No, you can write your ticket up, but I'm not taking it. It needs three points and £60 fine Oh, well, you're well. going to end up getting yourself arrested what? for a seatbelt. What? Why am I going to get myself arrested? Because, because you're writing me out a ticket and I'm yeah. refusing to take it. There's more bad news for Andrew. While Sam was speaking to him, I went around and had a look at the vehicle and noted two of his tyres. Had quite a few cuts in the tyre wall, which is extremely dangerous. What colour's your T-shirt? Why, why what you, colour's your T-shirt? Why are, you like, why, are you like not... why are you being like that? You know what colour my T-shirt is. OK, your T-shirt's white and what colour's the seatbelt? I don't know, you tell me. T- your seatbelt's black. So what do you yeah. think I'm going to see across your T-shirt as you're driving past me? I don't know, maybe, maybe you... Maybe the... Like... Maybe the seatbelt across your Thank T-shirt, you. which I didn't see. He quite liked Sam, and I think it helped the fact that we were females and we'd calm the situation down. Sam knows exactly how to keep people sweet by using some well-known customer care tips, like always be polite and take the time to deal with the customer's problems. OK, it's so fine. time doesn't bother me to know that. No, it's fine. Doesn't bother me to be I fair. I do my, do my own 14 days and don't pay the fine, is that right? And, well, you can do 28 days and not pay the fine if you mind. want. So you've got Dude, twice as long. Always encourage a good relationship with the customer. What is that aftershave you're wearing? It is really nice, yeah, isn't it? Five, nine, three, four, is it? Millennium? No. No. Midnight. 
That is very nice. Uh, so what's your perfume like scent? Surrender. And mine's poison. Between the two of us, you've got no yeah. chance, have you? <laughs> I can smell your one, but I can't smell it. Uh, <laughs> see, I haven't got that close. And always give the customer more than they might expect. Well, what's she want right now? Another ticket? Yeah, we need to speak to you about your tyres as well. Oh, I just got them done. I just come out of the toilet, please. I think they're done. Yeah, I just... And I'll show you how oh, I know. Listen, oh, look, Andrew, let me finish first. What, what are you going to give? What are you going to give me points for that? No, Andrew, well. let me finish. Let this lady finish, and then I'll speak to you. You've got two women talking to you. Come back down to you want a minute oh, ago. Oh man, you're what not going to give me points for that. Just... Let's stick to the level that we're going to do, oh, and then I'll explain to you what's going to happen. After taking my ticket, he certainly didn't want the tyre ticket. Come round here a second. This is an advisory. See your tyres here. Yep, yeah. yeah, that is through prolonged use of going up and down curbs. Yep, yeah. yeah. you need to get them changed because effectively it's affecting the side of the tyre of the wall, yeah. and it could usually have a blowout easier than what you normally would. Round here is my main concern. Okay, you've got a chunk taken out there. You've got a nice big chunk there. Fortunately, it's the safety of your vehicle that I'm more concerned about. The fact you've got a kiddie at some point in that car means that you should be above reproach when it comes to the safety of your vehicle. Tickets for defective tyres may be worth credits, but tyre safety isn't something Shona takes lightly. At the end of the day, he's not wearing his seatbelt. He's travelling in a 30 mile an hour zone, built up area, um, and if that tyre were to blow because of the cut in the tyre wall, he wouldn't be able to control that vehicle. He'd have a crash. Are you How serious? Are you going to you're gonna give me another ticket and another fine for that? How many points have you got in your I'm not taking that ticket then. But that's no points in your licence. Yeah, I'm not taking that ticket. What, have do you, you think got I've got money to throw details? away? Yeah. You might as well arrest me. I'm not taking that ticket, man. It's to... more down to safety than it is us just being pedantic and giving him a ticket for the sake of giving him a ticket. My colleague's already spoken to you and now I'll deal with you. I understand what you're saying and you don't want to accept the ticket. That's fine. All I'll do is I'll just send you to court for your details. But I still need to fill out the ticket and then all you need to do is fill out the back bit that you want to go to court. Don't pay the fine, don't produce your licence and just be a summons to court. I enjoy situations like that where I can try and defuse them just by talking to people so I can try and calm people down. You're not going to arrest me for not taking my licence in. Oh, what a shame. Do you really want to be arrested by yeah, us? Yeah, I used to, yeah. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> that's, your, that's your ticket. You know what I mean? So you wouldn't mind if we stopped you again? No. Oh, good man. See, that's what we like. Mm. Smiley man. Yeah. But if you're two blokes now, it'd be different. different but we're story. not. And he did say if you were men, this would have turned out completely different. And I honestly believe that that would have been the case. How much is this now? 120 quid. Did you pass maths? What could I do with 120 quid? Well, well, that's a very open answer there, question. Sam and Shona have succeeded with the ultimate customer care tip. Always give memorable service. We have to do our job at the end of the day. And that's just part and parcel of it, unfortunately, for him. It's different with two women because, like, boy, what can, what can I say? But if we were too close, it'd be a different, different story. <laughs> I've been called heartless before. I don't get credits for discretion. And sometimes, you know, a lot of people out and about that we stop, they're only dealing with the police when we've stopped them for the seatbelt, for the mobile phone, or for something to them that's quite minor, but they don't see the catastrophic incidents that we go to and what we have to deal with. Reports are coming in of just such a catastrophic incident, 10 miles north of Bedford on the busy A6. Rescue workers are at the scene. Now, traffic cops PC Matt Bill and PC Mark West are being called in as well. Good. Yes, yes, sir. The information we had was there was three vehicles involved and it was believed to be serious injury to one of the occupants. An air ambulance is on its way from Essex. When they're paramedics at the scene and they've called the air ambulance, then that means that they're concerned enough that it, you know, it's usually pretty serious and it's one that we need to get to and, and to deal with ourselves, secure it and gain any evidence. Matt's an old hand, but going to this kind of job never gets any easier. There is a sort of trepidation as to what you're actually going to see when you turn up. But other than that, you tend to switch into work mode and, and not think about it. The first thing you've got to do is get there.
The crash is on a 60 mile an hour stretch of the A6 at a T-junction. It's a notorious accident black spot. There have been 20 accidents here in the last two years. Three cars have been smashed, but the only serious injury is to a female passenger who's trapped in the blue Honda Civic and fighting for her life. Right, we've got, got this lady who's with this car. She's OK. We've got, I'm not sure who's in the back in this Audi. There's no one in it. That one, the driver, he's got a cut on his head, but the female passenger they're quite concerned about. The They've got, still in it. no, the driver's out. It's the female passenger who's trapped. They've got the air ambulance en route. Um, and a consultant and test as well. What are they concerned about? They, yeah. yeah. She was still in the car and there was lots of people around her dealing with her. So it was difficult to actually see any sort of level of injury. It was a case of relying on the information we were getting from the paramedic service. Certainly there was a serious head injury, but I think that the main concern was that they thought she may have fractured her neck. Um, and that was, you know, any sort of swelling on that could cause paralysis or death. With the prognosis looking bleak, a full-scale investigation into exactly what happened is going to take place, just as it would for a serious crime. The first step is to get the accounts of any witnesses. Right, right there. As we approach here, right, she just drove straight across, turning into that garage. Right. Yeah? The old boy coming the other way did not stand a chance. He went like that, she went that way, he went that way, he spun right round, right back. The man knows the when, the where and the why. I was convinced that all the way up here she was on the phone, but only at that roundabout did I actually see her on the phone. One of the lads over there with a yellow high vis on says she was definitely on the phone when it happened. And he clearly knows who. Yes, that middle-aged woman standing there, she was blocking the up. The one, the one. No, the the male driver of the blue Honda had no chance of avoiding the crash, but has escaped with only cuts and bruises. Can you, can you remember what happened, mate? Mate, there was like a queue of traffic this way. Well, not a, I don't know, you know, just a lot of cars up the hill. Yeah. One well, at the front just, just went, just didn't stop, didn't, just went, turned into the garage. OK. You're saying the other car has pulled across your path yeah, into the it garage? It was on the A6. Right. Going towards Weston. And right. Remarkably, the woman suspected of being on her phone, who turned into the young man's path, has escaped unscathed. At a collision like that, I think you've got to try and remain impartial. It's easy to let your own judgment come in. You've got to sort of try and make sure that you get all the facts from people as they're telling you. Um, and then it's then that you can sort of take a step back and actually have a look at it when you've got all the information uh, and sort of piece it together from there. The information needed is why exactly did the woman not see the oncoming car? I don't remember anymore, really, except for Big Bang. <laughs> right, OK. I don't certainly remember seeing a car. Uh, whether I turned or not, I suppose I must have done. OK. But I certainly... All I remember is the airbag. She spoke as though Basically, it was just a, a normal accident. She, she'd pulled across the path of this vehicle, she'd misjudged its speed, and there was no mention of any phone or, or anything like that at all at the time. But someone else also witnessed her using her phone. Well, we was coming down there, we'd been following them for about three or four miles, and then uh, that woman, she was on the phone, and she's gone to turn into the garage, obviously not concentrating, and turned straight in front of them, spun them right round. With the suspicion growing that being on her mobile phone was the cause of the crash, it'll be down to the traffic cops to prove it. It's just so dangerous. Like, if someone's not wearing their seatbelt, that's their life that they're putting at risk. But when you're using a mobile phone, you put another road user's lives at risk. I think it's been said that it's something like um, being just over the drink drive limit when you're on your phone. The air ambulance has arrived at last but the emergency crews are still struggling to get the casualty out from the wreckage of her car. She was conscious and breathing at the time, um, and obviously in a lot of pain, so the last thing they want to do is drag her out and actually make anything worse, particularly with that sort of neck injury, being the, the force of the impact suddenly stopping, so she will whip her head back and forth. The front A-pillar has bent down, uh, and that's where she's got the head injury from, is actually the pillar itself. 
while they work to free her trapped legs. The driver, her boyfriend, is going to be taken to hospital by ambulance. So the intrusion has all come in and it basically dropped the engine on her foot. She's given her a bad foot injury, pushed it right back into her footwell. Well, I'm good friends with, with the driver and the... Looking on anxiously, a friend of the injured couple has heard the speculation about the cause of the crash. It's just unbelievable. I don't know whether it is the case that the woman was on her phone or not, but if she was, she just needs to put her phone down and take a look at what she's done, you know what I mean? It's disgusting. The mobile phone belonging to the woman has been seized. It'll have to be analysed by experts before any real evidential data can be had from it. Just to update you, she's going to be airlifted to Adam Brooks. Adam Brooks. Yeah, they said she's stable at the moment, but is yeah. potentially nasty. But they're going to airlift her. Adam Brooks is a, a head injury specialist hospital. They obviously identified that that's where they wanted to send her, and the quickest way to get her there by far would be that okay. air ambulance. Ready, brace, lift. Oh. It's already been an hour since the smash. And although now stable, the casualties' head injuries are still being classified as life-threatening. For Inspector Matt Thompson, it's incidents like this that vindicate the hard line his officers take against drivers who ignore traffic laws. Someone gets a mobile phone ticket and they get frustrated. You know, we're told we should be out catching burglars and robbers and rapists and people get frustrated being given a ticket. But we do take robbery, burglary and such offences really seriously. But when it comes to something like this, you realise actually using a mobile phone you know, that girl could be dead, that girl could have a serious injury, and you've got to think, you know, where does it go from that? So for us, you know, it doesn't get more serious. And if we're using a mobile phone, or speeding, or not wearing seatbelts, you know, we give tickets out because this is a consequence of it. Adam Brooks is in neighbouring Cambridgeshire, but thanks to the helicopter, it's only minutes away, though it's still going to be a race against time for the injured woman. Back in Luton, Sam and Shona are still on their mission to give tickets out. We're like little Duracell batteries. Once we're out there, we don't stop. You do make your own luck, and you, you go purposely to places where you know you're going to find something. There we go. Both of our eyes were drawn to an Astro that had very dark-tinted windows. Dark-tinted windows are just the thing for people who are modest but installing them illegally can have expensive consequences. £60 or £30 ticket, isn't it? Yeah. You can only let 70% of light through your windows. Anything below that, then you're illegal. It's the front windows that matter, and Shona's got a special device for measuring how tinted they are, called a tint man. Right, is the car registered to you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah? He didn't understand why we'd stopped him. Take a seat with my colleague in the back of the car. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. And are you with this chap here? Yeah. What's in the back here, then? Hello. There's a child. To Sam and Shona, the back of their car is their office. It brings a whole new meaning to hot desking. Is it your vehicle? Uh, it's my mum's car. Excellent. You got insurance to drive with it? Well, my, my mum has, yeah. I'm, I'm learning to drive, innit? Where's your L plates? I didn't know I was had to have our place. I thought if it was insured and I had the person in the passenger seat and she's over 20, what was it, 20 something, and she's had a license over three oh, years. Oh, oh dear. dearie me. This isn't going to go well, I feel. So, so what, 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 just because I haven't got L plates on? You need to speak to my colleague. Um, just because I haven't got L plates on? Are you known to the, what's your name, my friend? Huh? What's your name? Oh, Adam Smiley. Mr Smiley was the driver, and he wasn't particularly smiley at all. We're just going to do this. Yeah, if you don't mind. Is it the three points, isn't it, either side of the window? Right, the tints on your windows, front windows, are illegal. People put them in because they think it looks cool with the shape and style of their car, when really it actually looks quite ridiculous sometimes. The tint machine measures how much light can pass through the window. Any reading below 70 is a failure. 9.9, .9. this one's 10.2. During the side, they've got to let 70% natural light in. And that's quite clearly way below. They can't necessarily see out if the weather's bad, and we can't see in, so we don't know who's driving that car. People have them tinted for very different reasons, but it raises our suspicion because we can't see who's driving that vehicle, so we want to know that the person driving is meant to be in the vehicle and advise them accordingly with regards to do with their tints. 
I didn't know. That's not fair, though, because I didn't know that we're not supposed to have helpers. If well, I knew I was supposed to have helpers, I'd have helpers, right. isn't it? It's, it's ignorance isn't an, isn't an excuse, OK? It's written in the... Um, I just don't think it's fair that I'm going to get points on my licence, but I haven't even I haven't even passed my licence yet. When I do pass, I have to pay more my insurance it's because of my mum. It's my mum's... Oh, the details, that fault. Adam! Yeah. yeah, but seriously, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sorry for being rude, officer, yeah, but it's not my fault, yeah? My mum's the one that wanted me to drive, yeah? Yeah. I didn't even want to drive. I didn't even know I was supposed to have L plates. I would have had them, innit? Okay. He was pushing his luck an awful lot, blaming his mum for all sorts of things. You're the driver of that vehicle, aren't you? No, I'm... Learner driver of that vehicle. Right, that's the I'm same the learner driver. I'm not the driver. I'm the learner driver. Yeah, I haven't even got a license yet. How can you give me points before I've got my license? The whole point of me driving, yeah, now is so I can learn to drive, so okay. I get my license in it, and I'm getting three points on my shit because of her. That's my mum. You should give her points, not me. Who she's was... the one that told me to drive, so she's responsible, not me. I had no respect for his mum whatsoever, which really shocked me. It's her car, yeah. She told me to drive. She's the one that's got a license, not me. So why am I responsible no. for her? You could give her points. For... It's not know, me. I think we need the air con on here with the amount of hot air coming out of this gentleman. I think certain women would be quite intimidated by coming across somebody like him. But by us shouting and screaming back, we're just lowering ourselves to his level and antagonising a situation that really doesn't need to be there. Adam, you're driving the car, mate. It's not, yeah, but the car doesn't belong to me, though, so how can you give me a ticket for shit on the car? It ain't mine. Yes, yes. Adam, can you just pipe down just for a second, because I'm trying to talk? Help. Can you just confirm who the RO is, please? The RO is the registered owner. Oh, did he say the RO? Yes, yes. Adam, smiley. Adam, the car's yours. The computer has confirmed it's not his mum's, as he says, after all. Oh, and no insurance in 2007. Six points. So you actually, Adam, as a provisional licence holder, only ha you have nine points on your provisional licence. Yes, it should. Exactly, because of officers like you make it impossible for young drivers to drive. So I might as well drive illegally. I might as well continue to drive illegally as well. He got nine points on his provisional licence. So trying to tell me he was trying to drive legally somewhat made me laugh. I just wish I was white, you'd let me go then, didn't it? When you're black, yeah, it makes your whole life harder for you. Sorry, there's a gentleman in, in the back so you've that's got a couple of racist right. poppers on you. Adam, what? I'm on the telephone trying to sort this out. Can you just, just tell go... Black, and then I'll take my old license away, innit? Kind of officer Nine. discretion anymore, like it used to be. Ten like, you can see, I've explained to you the, the, the situation. You've done nothing but shout and be abusive to us, Has and it? you expect us yeah, to sit and deal with yeah. that and listen to us. I don't care what you do. You no, might as well just take go. my license Great, take everything, you know what I'm saying? Thank I don't you. care. Bye-bye. Because it doesn't make a difference to me, so you can take my license oh, take everything. I don't care. Way. I need to ask for your ethnicity. Out of that list, could you... down, man. Here you go. If you would like to it's define your ethnicity... You can write down whatever you like. I'll just put down that you haven't defined your ethnicity, and that's fine by me. I can do that. At the end of the day, we stopped him for how dark his tints were. They meant to let 70% natural light in. His were let in between 9 and 10. I couldn't see what colour he was. I had no idea what ethnicity he was, or from where he was from. So I find it a bit insulting that he's suggesting I'm racist when I can't see who's driving that car. Adam? Why don't you just have a heart and just let me go, man? You've, you've already got me. You've already charged me money, man. What else do you want from me? The heartless cops are giving Adam a £30 ticket for his illegal window tints and a £60 ticket and three points for failing to display any L plates. Obviously, if you had a heart, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have done me like this, man. You just let me go. Well, I'm not going to help you tear it off, am I? Oh, well, I'll do it then. Job, oh. I'll tear it off, because I know that you won't drive around like this. The tints are simply a film applied to the inside of the window. Sam's making sure he doesn't carry on breaking the law. You saw by his reaction, he actually peeled off the entire side of the tint the other side. He won't drive around with half-tinted windows. It looks silly. Well, they've given me £90 fine and three points on my licence before I've even got a licence. I'm, I'm trying to be in a driver's seat to learn how to drive so that I'm legitimate. And they've stopped me from doing that once again. They've, they're taking my money. They're taking the money I haven't even got. I've got to feed my son. I've got a son, I've got two sons, yeah, and I'm on benefits, yeah, and I've got to pay, I've got to pay for them to eat, and now I can't even do that because they're going to take my money. I just don't think he realises that us traffic officers don't actually have hearts. No, we don't have hearts. Do you care? No. At the scene of the accident on the A6, the road is still closed as investigations continue. Following the witnesses' damning allegations, the carnage caused by a phone call is clear to see. With fears her life may still be in danger, a specialist family liaison officer, PC Craig Baker, has been called in. I spoke to our ambulance guard and he said it's, it's your head in the blunt trauma of what's, what's come in. 
the badly injured girl, Lorna Foley, is just 20 years old. It doesn't matter how much training you have, you still, you got feelings. And to get told someone could effectively die, it's disheartening. A number of witnesses actually, it's good information that the driver soon was on mobile phones, we seized mobile phone, that's all been You gotta be careful what we tell people, and it was decided that we wouldn't tell them about a mobile phone at that stage until we knew, because at that stage it's only a possibility. Craig's immediate task is to inform Lorna's brother and sister of her accident and get them to her hospital bedside as quickly as possible. I think the most difficult time is when you initially tell the family. You get so many different reactions and you cannot predict what reaction you'll get. Further back down the A6, approaching Bedford, traffic cops PC Mark Atkins and Sergeant Chris Smith have come across someone else with a smoking problem with their car. Blue smoke, isn't it? <laughs> Plumes of blue smoke everywhere. We came to the top of the A6, we saw the, the golf pulling into the lay bar on the near side, so we pulled in behind him. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Ooh, he's got a dodgy plate as well. The number plate isn't legal because its characters are a German style. It doesn't meet British standards. It's a, it's a different font to what our AMPR cameras are used to recognising, so sometimes they can misread them. The cause of all the smoke is under the bonnet. Well, it wasn't on fire, but um, I think if it had gone much further, it would have been. It had dumped all the oil all over the exhaust and, uh, you know, he'd blown the engine, basically. But at least his kids are happy. They can watch cartoons on the telly now, which would have been illegal if he was driving. It's all under the Road Traffic Act. Um, you cannot have a TV screen that is visible to the driver that's likely to take the attention away from the road in front of them. So it, it can be anything from due care to dangerous driving. Obviously, what with your dodgy number plate and your TV in the car as well? <laughs> huh? Just, they just turned it on, the told them to turn it on. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, OK. I've got to get with my little girls in the back, they're watching Alice in Wonderland. Oh, OK, and you're not? No, I, no? I just turned it off. Yeah? yeah. Okay, because obviously you've just stopped, yeah? Yeah, I just stopped. So yeah. I said, put the tether on. I couldn't see if it was on or not um, when we were driving along because of all the smoke. Um, so I just have to take his word for it that he, would, he wouldn't lie to a policeman. Just check how he's done the suspension. Two ticks. There's no give up at all, is there? No. <laughs> it's a bit. Just a bit concerned about how low the car is. Do you find steering a problem? No, I don't. Go, does it... Huh? There's no wrong with the steering. No? No, no, don't rub no more. No, it's just because. Yeah, it's got coilovers in it, it's got solid. Well, it's got all pulley bushes, it's got anti roll mm. bars on it. Yeah? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Where's it like? That? Right. Apart from the engine, there's nothing wrong with the car, he's insisting, as it has recently passed its MOT. But there is with his number plate. Germany plates, isn't it? Well, you can't have them on the road in England, though, can you? And it's not for the first time. We've had, we've had this chat before, haven't we? Yeah, but I don't the plate was blatant. Yeah, but... You like, can, right can read it. It doesn't matter. It has to comply with the Vehicle Excise Act, which means it has to have a British standard mark on top. Where on that plate is a British standard mark? He didn't particularly want to look at Mark, because Mark had stopped him about two or three months before um, and done him for exactly the same thing. They're making sure it won't happen again. What, what I'm going to do is, because we have spoken to you before, I'm going to give you another 60 quid yeah, ticket, all right? All right, cool. But, no, don't, to be honest. I thought you'd learn. But there's another problem. Does your insurance company know about these tins? Straight up. That, they wouldn't insure you with them, because that, that is more than a 30% tint, isn't it? That, on our Vectra, that's the most tint you can have on the front. That's the most. Anything that you see like this, and they ain't going to insure you, buds. So, straight up, before we get measuring device and things like that, you're going to tell me you're going to get rid of that tin, aren't you? Yeah, what, are you going yeah. to do that as well? No, 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 yeah. no, because you're going to tell me you're going to get rid of it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll good, rid of it. Yeah. good answer. Because oh, yeah. at the end of the day, if you're an insurance company, if you have a bash in this, yeah. they ain't going to pay out, because that's illegal. Yeah, yeah? OK, cool. I'll just do your ticket then. Mark is showing that sometimes a bit of discretion is still the order of the day. Quite a lot of discretion there, to be honest. He could have gone to court for all those offences put together. When you think of the number plate, um, the, the tints, uh, the, the smoke billowing out the back, but that's not to even mention the DVD player he had in the car. The number plates must be a recent addition, as anything non-standard is an automatic MOT failure. 
they, they now are included in the test. Unless it's got an, a, a legal plate on it, it will fail. Oddly, while number plates are checked in order for a vehicle to pass the MOT and meet road safety standards, tinted windows aren't included in the test. He knows what he's done. He knows what he knows. He knows the game. I've, I've pointed this all out to him before. Uh, I was quite reasonable with him last time. Gave him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he had other defects on the car the last time we spoke to him, but on this occasion, sort of your patience wears a little bit thin because um, you try and try and help these people, show them. Because people may not necessarily know the, the law around the number plate, so you try and educate them a little bit, but he's just taking the mickey now, isn't he? At the hospital in Cambridge, X-rays have brought good news. Lorna, the young girl seriously injured in the crash on the A6, is off the critical list, but she has bashed her head and broken a vertebrae in her back. Where is that? It's in the lower part of your back, so your back is divided into individual bones. Yeah. So just where the lower arch is in the back, mm. um, it's towards the bottom of that. Mm. Okay. okay. Um, and it's just rather being a square, one corner's come in of it. Okay. Uh, once you're at hospital, one of my colleagues will be in touch with you. All roads police, and we target people using a mobile phone. And to be fair, so we should. People don't get it that mobile phone, using a mobile phone, kills. Seven months after the accident, Lorna, a full-time floristry student, and her boyfriend James are still coming to terms with what happened. I think because everything was going really well as well before, I, I just got, like, student of the year at college. Put all of our plans and our future on hold to now deal with something that she's, you know, put in front of us that we didn't, didn't ask for. Lorna is lucky to be alive, but it's going to be a long time before she fully recovers from the damage to her spine and a brain injury that's affected her memory, all because of a minor traffic offence. You know, you're driving around at 60 miles an hour plus, not in control of something that's in excess of two tonnes. You should, you should be punished. I think it's people that they don't understand why. I think they just, they know that you shouldn't do it, but they don't know why you shouldn't do it, really. I think that's what it is. Further investigation at the scene of the horrific crash revealed that there might have been another factor why the woman turned into the oncoming traffic. Her front windows were illegally excessively tinted. And further examination of her phone uncovered evidence that pointed to her being on it at the time of the crash. On the phone, it had a certain number of calls, and we had all those listed um, from the handset itself. Yet when we then got um, the subscriber records, it showed that there was an extra call that wasn't shown on the handset. There's only two ways that that can happen. One is that she's deleted it from the handset. Why would she do that? That specific call at, that was made at or around the time of the collision. The only other way would be that is if mid-call the phone was turned off. 60-year-old Gillian Green pleaded guilty in court to dangerous driving and was sentenced to a nine-month suspended prison sentence and banned from driving for a year and a half. So many things going on, so much going on, so much foulness in the world.